Dagan salamat uh, Pastor Day. It's good to be back at uh, GCAF and uh, I'd like to thank the leadership of the church yeah, under uh, Pastor Day with the pastoral team and Pastor Jay communicating with me, inviting me to this uh, momentous or a milestone that uh, GCAF has reached 36 years of existence. And I remember also Pastor Al becoming a part of the National Board of Trustees while I was uh, president of uh, the Kamakop as well. So we like to thank God for the time we had, the contribution he had to our religious society. And I also remember uh, I forgot to mention this morning, Pastor Ruben Ang no, has been part of uh, Kamakop. And I think when I was president, he also was prayer, national prayer coordinator. And until now, I think, no, but he said to Bishop Ed, they're good friends with Bishop Ed. Sabi niya ata, tiguwang na ko, Bishop, di na ko prayer coordinator. Uh, so that's what happened. Uh, by the way, uh, Pastor Dave, I'm already 66 years old, no? and uh, it's good that you mentioned that I'm 65 because although I'm 66, I still look 65, diba? Okay, lang yapon. So, praise God uh, for His continued sustenance all throughout these years, no? and I like to thank God indeed for all of this. I like to bring greetings from our religious society. And uh, in the name of our president, our bishop, Ed Cahes, and uh, especially from our Lord Jesus, no? who I believe is gracing this occasion, and uh, it's 36 year anniversary of GCAF. So, happy anniversary. Uh, can you please say to your neighbor, happy anniversary as well. And uh, we thank you all for your wholehearted support and prayers on behalf of our denomination. And rejoice with us indeed because we just concluded a successful uh, general assembly. Praise God for that. We had it at Bacolod City at the SMX uh, Convention Center, the first time that Kamakop has held its general assembly. Uh, problema lang kay medyo mahal mahal yun, no? Ang uh, renta sa maong uh, convention, but by God's grace, we were able to uh, uh, pay the rent, and God has provided indeed for our needs. And to the mothers, Happy Mother's Day as well. We thank God for your life, and we are thankful and grateful that we have mothers in this world. Let us look to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning and we are grateful and thankful that we could once again come and worship you and we rejoice together with Jikaf celebrating its 36 years of existence and as you have been with the church for the past several years, I know that uh, with your hand and your leadership, the church will continue on. And today, as we listen to your word, we pray that you will bless your word into our hearts and may we receive it with gladness and apply it in our daily life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Duterte administration was known as the Build, Build, Build administration. Many road networks were built, especially here in Mindanao. Kay sempre taga Mindanao siya ang halos tanan nga mga infrastructure uh, iyang gihimo diri nagpasalamat uh, ni Ana and we also would like uh, uh, to thank him indeed because he has widened the roads and he has indeed uh, also built bridges no? built bridges today kini nga programa nga build 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 Gipadayon sa atong bago nga presidente, si PBBM. Mona, ang iyang slogan po is, as he continued this Build, Build, Build program, ang iya is B, 
build, build more. Okay? Build, build more. BBM. So, mona siya. By the way, uh, I preached this sermon this morning. But rest assured, it's not a recording. Okay? Kay mo lang gihapon yung wali karong ang buntag. Hantod alas tres. Unya ambot ang nakadungog niya na niaging uh, seven o'clock worship. No? Basi mapul na. Pero rest assured na some points are not really uh, the same. No? But we would like to look at this that uh, behind all the constructions that has taken place, there are builders that are being employed. We call them contractors. And they are paid to engage in the activities of building. However, there is another construction that is taking place in this world. That's taking place right in before our eyes. And this is in the religious arena or landscape. And that is the building of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. The church is being built. And Christ is the builder. Christ is the builder. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, on which we will really base the message of our God for us today, we find here that as we follow these verses, it reveals to us that the church is being built and its builder is the Lord Jesus Christ. The situation in which Peter was writing his letter is that there was persecution that was taking place. So when he wrote this epistle, we, uh, some scholars have said that Peter was writing at the beginning of the reign of Emperor Nero. Emperor Nero. Accordingly, Emperor Nero ordered the burning of the city of Rome. Eyang ipasunog ang siyudad sa Roma. And then what happened is, he blamed the Christians that they were the ones responsible for the burning of Rome. So mauna yang gihimo. And uh, because of this, he persecuted the Christians. Persecution of the Christians under Nero became widespread. And perhaps there was now the beginning of a systematic no? systematic persecution of believers. So ang panahon, na, na, sa panahon na nagsulat si Apostle Peter, he was writing during what we call perilous times. He was writing uh, in the midst of difficult times. But he was writing for the purpose of encouraging believers not to give up but to continue on to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. As you see in verse 1 of chapter 1 of 1 Peter, iyang i-address ang iyang recipients. No? Peter addresses the believers of his time as what? Strangers in the world. No? They were aliens in the world. They were scattered throughout the places called Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And this is now modern Turkey. These places, are, uh, this mound is now in modern Turkey. The question, can the church thrive in the midst of persecution, difficult and perilous times? The big answer is yes. Yes. Because the builder of the church is Christ himself. This day, we will look at what Christ is building. What Christ is building. If you look at verse 5, Peter says, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. So Christ here is the builder of the spiritual temple. The builder of the spiritual temple. The temple in Jerusalem... <clears throat> was still standing when Peter wrote his epistle. Uh, some say that he wrote this epistle about uh, 62, between 62 to 64 AD. And uh, in AD 66, we know from history that the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans under Commander Titus. He flattened the temple in Jerusalem. 
And so we find in here that uh, the believers in Jerusalem were having or they associated themselves with the temple. So when Peter was saying here that you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house, he was now tell, telling them that the temple before that you were associated with will soon pass out. And here, looking back at the Christians in the first church in Jerusalem, they were gathering in the temple. But they also gathered in homes for fellowship, the breaking of bread, for prayer, and the study of the scripture. And now what has happened? The believers are scattered. And Peter is now proclaiming that God is building another temple. Another temple. But this temple is no longer the literal or physical temple. The literal temple in Jerusalem was built with stones, carved stones, until it became a structure that God desired based on his instructions. But Peter says in verse 5, You, being built into a spiritual house, a spiritual temple with the use of living stones. Living stones. Now, when we look at this verse, you will notice that it is in the passive tense. Being built. Meaning the church is not able to build itself. Therefore, someone is building it. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why if you look back, you will notice that Peter said the living stone without an S. Referring to Jesus Christ. And after verse 5 going uh, into the latter verses, he refers to Jesus Christ as the capstone, as the cornerstone. And here we find that he is the builder of the church. He is the builder of the church. But he uses the living stones to build this spiritual temple, this spiritual house. And who are the living stones? He refers to them as the, as the Christians, the believers who are scattered, who are aliens in a, uh, the, the world, known world at the time. So here, the Christians were the living stones and Christ is continually building this spiritual house, this spiritual stone with the living stones. The spiritual temple is now known as the church. And take note, the word living, living stone, should help us see the church as what? Alive, dynamic, and full of life. Living stones. Living stones. So the church should continue to manifest and to show that it is alive. And how would the church manifest that it is alive? The church will manifest that it is alive as it continues to proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As it continues to disciple people. And that is why we are called to do this. Being able to share the gospel from all walks of life. Alive. Dynamic. Full of life. At the height of the racial discrimination in the United States, Martin Luther King, a non-pastor, was one of those who opposed racial discrimination. During his time, there will be restaurants for Negroes, for black people, and restaurants for white people. Even the use of the restroom at the time. When it is a restroom for white people, no black people will be able to enter it. There was so much racial discrimination. And so he was against it. He actually advocated such position that indeed people... The blacks and the whites should be united, should be one. But as he continued to advocate his position, at some point in time, he became discouraged. Na discouraged in town ng pastor, basin na stress, na burn out na. He must have succumbed to the weight of the issues at hand. So one day, Martin Luther saw his wife, nagsanina og itum, she was wearing a black dress. Now, sa tuwa, bisang karon, 
when one is wearing a black dress, a black shirt, no, dili po din nga black shirt na rebelde, no? Pero on sa man, ang atong una-una, na ay namatay. Namatyan. Namatyan sila. So, Martin Luther, no? Martin Luther asked his wife, is there in the family na namatay? Ingon po ng iyang wife, naa. Then ang utana si Martin Luther, kinsa man ang namatay, ingon ang iyang asawa, ikaw. Ingon niya, how can that be? I'm still alive. You pronounce me already dead. Why? Ingon ni Mrs. Martin Luther, you may be alive physically, but you are dead because you are manifesting a life of defeat. and despondency. Wa niya nagipakita na naapas siya ay murag kinabuhi. He was defeated. But soon later, we realized that he made what we call that spits no? in the mountains, I think of Atlanta. And then we see him continue to advocate indeed for the unity of black and white people. Perhaps some of us or the church herself has shown a life of defeat. Kung atong tanawan ang uban na itong mga simbahan, moragwa na ikinabuhi. Di ba? There is no more dynamism. There is no more life. We must see to it that the church continues to be alive because its builder is the Lord himself. Christ is the builder and is alive in our midst. And so, in our existence as a church and as living stones, meaning as believers, we must show that there indeed is life. We are living stones built into a living spiritual house for the glory of our God. The second thing that I like to share with you from these verses is this. In verse 5, a going back, you are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. To be a holy priesthood. So Christ is the builder of the spiritual temple for a purpose. To be a holy priesthood. The spiritual temple that Christ is building has a purpose and that is what? To be a holy priesthood. Again, the Apostle Peter brings into his letter the idea of the priesthood because many of those probably that he was writing toward Jewish Christians, including those who were Gentile Christians. But the idea of the priesthood comes from what we call the Old Testament, the priesthood of the Old Testament, which went on until its destruction was especially given to a group of people, one of the tribes of Israel, and these are the Levites. Okay? The tribe of Levi was given this responsibility. Wala na sila inheritance dito sa land of Canaan. God said to them, you, I will be using you as the priests of this nation. And actually, mas maayogan sila because unsay giingon sa atong ginoo, I am your inheritance. Wow. I am your inheritance. Wa mo inheritance diri sa kalibutan, but God said to them, I am your inheritance. So they became a special kind of people with a special task whom the Lord has chosen and given the responsibility of taking care of the religious life of the Israelites. However, with the destruction of the temple of Jerusalem, the Jewish priesthood has now stopped or ceased. Wala na Jewish priesthood. But, take note, Peter, Peter in his letter shows that the concept of the priesthood has continued through what? The spiritual temple. It has not stopped, but it has continued, but on a spiritual level, on a spiritual plane, And on a different level, for it now encompasses all living stones. Meaning, 
all believers. Kaya, this is one of the things that the Reformation has actually declared. Why? Because Peter is teaching the priesthood of all believers. Ang tanan di ay mga Kristuhanon pari. Mutuo mo o dili. Marag, wa mo kasabot. <laughs> Pero, pwede ba ing nani mo magkatapad igsoon, ikaw usa ka pari? We all are priests of God. Tananta pari. The Apostle Peter is teaching the priesthood of all believers. The priesthood is no longer relegated to just a group of people that we have seen, the Levites, but given to all Christians. You are all a priest of and to God. Take note. You are all a priest of and to God. And so as the living stones will now comprise the spiritual temple, then the church today is the priest of God in this world. The, temp, uh, the, the church today is the priest of God in this world. The church takes on the responsibility on becoming the holy priesthood. The holy priesthood of God, whose high priest is Christ himself. The diaspora of believers sa panahon ni Peter need not have priests or mediators who will represent them to God For they now have direct access to God as God's holy priesthood. So Peter is saying you don't need to go to a priest and offer sacrifice. O sa atong panahon, you don't go to a priest and confess because you can go directly to God because you yourself are a priest before God. But as God's priesthood, Holy priesthood of God, let us realize that we represent the people of this world to God. On the other hand, we represent God to the people of this world. Therefore, we have an intercessory ministry in this world. We need to become an intercessor before God and for God for this world because the church is now God's holy priesthood. We need to stand in the gap just as uh, Ezekiel was trying to say. We need a man who will stand in the gap. And the church should be able to stand in the gap in order to intercede for people who are lost and present God to people who are lost in this world today. And that is our function, the purpose for which you are called. A spiritual temple, a holy priesthood of God. As we continue with verse 5, notice verse 5. Offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You see, Christ is not only the builder of the spiritual temple and as the holy priesthood, it offers spiritual sacrifices as well. So associated with the priesthood of the Old Testament, were animal sacrifices and needed to be offered to God as He mandated His people to do. Animal sacrifices were offered. There were what we call sin offerings, guilt offerings. We had peace offerings, purification offerings that people had to do with animals. Aside from animal sacrifice, however, there were also grain offerings. There were also drink offerings. And these were offered. These were offered. Now, with the building of the spiritual temple, the literal sacrifices were now done away with and with spirit and now with spiritual sacrifices that needs to be offered, no? Wala na tong animal sacrifices because we now have a spiritual temple and spiritual sacrifices has to be offered. Usay man gyud na apatay mga sacrifice, di ba? labo nang naigikan sa probinsya muli gani na apay gi sacrifice nga puti nga manok no ambot asa pud gi sacrifice kinahanglan na ba gyud puti no ambot nga no puti ang kinahanglan sacrifice usahay naapatay padugo no 
na ako'y one time na <clears throat> na-experensyahan. Na tingala ko na medyo naggabi-gabi na na ay gidala nga sakyanan sa simbahan. Sinila, Pastor, pwede ba ampuan ni nga mo sakyanan? Tingala ko, ang sakyanan, yun ako murag na may mga sani? Uh, nga nun eh, bago pa mauntan ni sakyanan, murag na may hugaw. Uy, ang hugaw di ay dugo. <clears throat> Mano sa'y may tabo, no? Pero ilag yung gidala sa ako ah, kanang ah, di na makitaan ba? No? Gabi na. Ang buot nga, no? <clears throat> Problema, no, sa'y, no? Anyway, iampuan ng iya na ako. Pero nagpadugo na dahi sila. Usay mo na may tabo, no? But that is now done away with. When we are a spiritual house, a spiritual temple, kinahanglan spiritual sacrifices na po ang atong i-offer. But what are the spiritual sacrifices that we need to offer? As a spiritual temple. Diha sa Hebrews 13.5, ang uh, nagsulat po ni Ning Maong uh, libro, many believe that it is the Apostle Paul also wrote this. He said, Through Jesus, therefore, let us, uh, Hebrews 13.15 rather, let us offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess His name. So one of those spiritual sacrifices, the eye, is what? To offer a sacrifice of praise. God's people must continually offer praise to Him. God's people must continue to offer praise at all times. Mora ba yun ni ang pinakalisod ng butang na himuon sa Kristuhanon? Mao magpapasalamat, di ba? Magdaig sa ginoo. Okay ra na, panahon na gitawag na ito, mag-praise and worship ta, mo dayig yuta sa gino. Pero panahon sa prayer meeting, mo yung ta, kinsa man diri magpasalamat, mo dayig sa gino. Pating hinayag tindog. Wag yun to sahay mo tindog, mo dayig sa gino. Mo na siguro, gihim mo siyang sacrifice of praise. No? Sacrifice of yun na magpat, magdayig sa gino. But anyway, This is one of the spiritual sacrifices that God's people must do, that the church must do to continually offer what we call a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that would confess that God is God and the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord. It is because of Him that we have this salvation. And in Hebrews 13.16, the following verse, na po gihisgutan niya, ang author ni Ingunan, do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Another spiritual sacrifice is to offer to God good works. To offer to God good works. And these good works that we must share is doing good in word or indeed in word or indeed we will <clears throat> in word winning we must continue to exhort one another we must continue to encourage one another indeed it could be something that we give it could be money or something that we could offer to help somebody especially within the body of faith and then In Romans 12:1, naging ano sab si Apostle Paul? Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So another spiritual sacrifice here is what our the consecration of our whole being to God, the consecration of our being to God. That is, we must be holy. We must. Our, uh, our life must be pleasing before God because this is our living sacrifice, our spiritual act of worship. The consecration of our whole life, our whole being as a holy vessel is a spiritual act of worship to God. The offering of spiritual sacrifices may done as a corporate body, meaning as a whole church, kinahanglan, Makit an usab kana siya, or it can be manifested in our day-to-day -day life through the living stones, meaning through becoming 
uh, Christians, followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we interact with people from all walks of life. From all walks of life. Praising the Lord, doing good, and living a holy life are acts of spiritual sacrifices. There are other spiritual sacrifices that we can actually look into, but these are some of the things that we need to, to see. May this be seen and manifested in the life of the church and through God's people anytime and anywhere. Anytime and anywhere. Christ is the builder of the church. No more, no less. Again, I would like to say, Christ is the builder of the church. No more, no less. The church is the creation of Christ, for this is what he said. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Christ builds his church to be a spiritual temple, a holy priesthood, and to offer Spiritual sacrifices. And you will take note in this verse, the gates of hell, Hades or hell will not overcome it. The church has been declared victorious even before it began. That is something to think about. Wow! Christ the builder <coughs> saying, I will build my church and it is going to overcome the gates of Hades or the gates of hell. Tiaw mo na, no? Wa pagani magsugod ang duwa like basketball kay bulong nakakinsay winner. No? Simbahan, winner. Wa pa magsugod winner na. Mona karon na uban sa ato murag we are glued to, our, to the playoffs of the NBA. Ang uban siguro na pildi, ang uban daog. Pasensya ng mga warriors. No? Pasensya ng yung warriors o ang mga, kitsa ba ito? Sons. No? Wana, eliminated na good sila. No? <coughs> Na-eliminate pagani sa Miami ang New York Knicks. No? Pero di, di mo mahibawan, kinsay mo daog, di ba? Pero simbahan, daog na. Wa pa magsugod ang duwa. Why? Because the builder of the church is our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God Himself. Who is God Himself. When we look at Christ as the builder of the church, I like us to just look at our religious society or denomination, the Kamakop. In 1947, the Kamakop started with how many churches? One, three, 13 local churches. They had their first general assembly in Cotabato City, 1947. Now, Kamakop is about 76 years, no? if you count from 1947. But take note. Today, Kamakop has 3,402 churches. From 13 to 3,402 churches. Praise God. Christ is the builder of his church. And not only with Kamakop, but with the rest of the biblical churches that continue to worship Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And then in 2018, we had a program of adding new churches. This was a five-year program which ended last year. Our target to add 750 new churches in 2018. And then in twin, uh, last year, 2022, we wanted to have 750. We ended with how many? 756 churches at the end of last year. Praise God. Even in the midst of the pandemic, there was so much difficulty. 
And I believe you also had this difficulty because you cannot come and worship face to face. And yet, God, God himself, Christ himself, is the builder of the church. That's why he could say, the gates of hell will never overcome it. We ended with that church, build, uh, church planting program with a high note. But we will not stop because Christ is the builder. And so Bishop Cahes has come up with a new program and he has just said, our program will be plus one. Plus one. And what would this mean? Every Kamako church, local church, whether big or small, must be able to plant a daughter church in three to five years' time. So we hope that we will double after five years. So the 3,402 will become 6,804. And hopefully we can go to the level and hit the mark 7,000 churches after five years. We don't know if we can do that, but by the help of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the builder of the church, I believe in my heart, as we give ourselves by His grace, this can be done. This can be done. We would like to see to it that there will be daughter churches planted. Why? At the beginning, when Kamakop started in 1947, it had what we call the three selves formula. And what are these three selves formula? Selves, self-governing, self-supporting, and self-propagating. A church that will not abide with this three such formula cannot be a member of Kamakop. So only those who will say, yes, we will be self-supporting, we will be self-governing, and we will be self-propagating. They were the ones that were included. But later on, that no longer became a guideline. No? But this is what we would like to see. Our local churches should be able to have a daughter church. Amen ba? You see, Jacob is, I believe, doing that already. And uh, I would still encourage you to continue on to have more daughter churches. Really, Jacob has become a mother church. Pero na ay uban na itong mga simbahan sa kamagop, dugay na, wa, gihapong anak, mo nang itawag nila, baog. No? Baog. Never ever to bear children. Na uban 50 years na, 60 years na. Wow, he po yung anak. I remember a student I was teaching in Malungon Center sa ilang APBS. Yun niya, sir, I was a member of a church 50 years na. Wow, pag you, daughter church. Yung una ko siya, dili siguro na baog, kanang simbahan yun ako, father church. Dili mother church. Kaya ang mga amahan, di man yun mga anak. But, the church is a she, the bride, and hopefully becomes a mother. And we would like to encourage, indeed, our churches to have daughter churches in three to five years. Plus one lang. Plus one lang. May the Lord help us and let us continue and move on to be God's triumphant church in this world today. To Him be the glory and honor. Amen.